Okay, in hindsight, after you were on the field, what would you have done differently to prepare yourself for the mission field? A number of things. I number one, I would I would have been I should have been better informed. Again, I talk about missions education. It is important. Good Bible colleges, um, good Christian universities, all have courses that talk about missions. And in your church, you can find material to help you grow in your understanding of missions. Uh, do some book learning. That's one thing I regretted. And I have since done that, but I would have been in a stronger position if I had done that to begin with. Uh, the other thing I, I wish I had known more about was the impact that missions has on the children of missionaries. As parents going overseas, and we had five children, we just uh, often have the attitude, this is our call and our family is going to come. And, and God will provide. And God does provide, but we don't understand the impact that this cross-cultural experience often has on MKs, missionaries' kids. And uh, learn about that because your kids will need a lot of support. Uh, they'll need even more support in their teenage years when they think about coming back to the U.S. Uh, to go to college. Uh, and and so do reading on that subject and understand uh, really the challenges that your children are going to face and uh, that's critical. We neglected that and we paid a price for that. Our kids suffered some bumps as a result of that and uh, so I would really encourage you to learn about the challenges MKs face. So those are, those are some important things. I've also learned that it's very important to stay in touch with those churches that support you. We've always tried to do that, but you have to remember that overseas you're in a partnership and the people sending you are there with you and they need to hear from you and uh, be informed of what's taking place. So really stay in touch with your church. Uh, you need their prayers and support, and uh, they need your input as well. Could you share an experience that's unique to the country that you minister in? I think one of the most unique experiences we've had has been to run in the summer. We have camps for Muslim children. And we don't do an underground ministry thing. Our ministry is a very above board. People know that we're with the Bi Christian Bible Society. Uh, but yet we have been invited into Muslim villages to have summer camps for their children. There's nothing for these Palestinian children to do. There aren't malls for them to go to. There aren't sports teams for them to be involved on in their society. They're just living out in these small villages with really nothing more than violence to entertain themselves and our camps have been meant to be an alternative to violence and the alternative to hate and destruction and it has been remarkable to for us when a village council of Muslim men invite us to have a summer camp for their kids knowing that we're Christians and we're the Bible Society that's a miracle I mean I never thought we would have that sort of relationship and those opportunities. And God surprises us every day. Uh, Mel Gibson's film that came out uh, last year, uh, we showed that four times at Birzeit University, the main Palestinian university. In their main auditorium, where four and 500 students were in each showing, we showed that four times to Muslim audiences. And the last two times we showed it, it was because the university invited us to show it again. So in the Muslim world, there are opportunities to share the gospel that just surprise you. Uh, and uh, the way it gets shared is that there are people there to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's what we're trying to do. So we have just seen uh, 
really miracle after miracle of God opening doors for a witness. That that has been really surprising to us. That kind of answered the last question that I had, which was to share a testimony of something that God's done in your ministry that you call a miracle. Well, those are miracles. I'd also like to say our student center is a miracle. It has, we've lived in the midst of a war in the Palestinian territories, and yet our ministry center has been open for uh, seven years now, uh, uh, six days a week, uh, serving the people and the students in, the, in our area in the northern part of the West Bank. And it's a miracle that we've been, ma been able to maintain that ministry without interruption during a time of war. And during most of these years, Karen and I have been the only Westerners uh, anywhere in the region. The only other foreigners were down in Jerusalem. So it was a miracle that we were able to maintain this witness. And that's also because of your prayer, so we want to thank you very much. Okay, do you, have, you want to say anything to Cooper City? Cooper City, just go for it. I mean, you are an awesome church, and you are bringing witness to people here in southern Florida. And just go for it. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day in which we should uh, attempt great things for God. There was a famous missionary to China named Hudson Taylor. And his, he was a frail boy. People thought he would fail. In fact, he failed the first time he went to China. But he had this sense of call that wouldn't die. And he, that call compelled him to go back. And he founded one of the greatest mission organizations uh, in history. It was called the China Inland Mission. And he had a motto. And that motto was, uh, expect great things from God attempt great things for God. And that's what we should do. We should expect great things, attempt great things. So just go for it. Okay, thank you.